Uh, I know I look like a series of white dudes. <laughs> it's like if Jim Carrey and Ryan Reynolds gave birth to Johnny Bravo. <laughs> And Jimmy Neutron was a midwife. <laughs> I came out here and y'all were looking at me like Vanilla Ice is making this comeback. <laughs> I knew he got tattoos, but oh my goodness. <laughs> it's good to be here, man. I'm originally from a hood little town in Northern California, which is actually inside the 707 area code. That's why I have this tattoo right here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just proud to be from a hood where the area code is also LOL, upside down. That's my favorite part. Because this is how I maintain my gangsterhood, man. Because if the stuff pops off, I'm like, what, 707 till I die, son? But if they got like a gun or a knife, I'm like, OMG, JK, LOL. Stop it. <laughs> Aw, uh, man, I went to the gym the other day. I was in the shower. Guy walks up, dude, hey, that's a nice tattoo. Leave me alone, it's a stretch mark, okay? Right here, I've got the Chinese symbol for neglect. Right over here, Kung Pao chicken and fried rice. I have a hand tattoo, uh, which you may have noticed. I got a bird on my hand. Uh, if you want people to ask you about a decision you've made every day for the rest of your life, <laughs> I highly recommend getting a hand tattoo. <laughs> it's a lot of fun uh, every day. Ew, ew. Why'd you get that? Do you like birds? What kind of bird is it? Is it a sparrow? Is it a swallow? I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. I guess if being a stand-up comic has taught me anything, it's that I'm really good at making decisions. <laughs> that have a negative impact on my future. I was just like, let's, let's go. Never want to do anything again. Let's get it. But I had to up the ante. I recently got knuckle tats as well, because why not? Once you have a bird on your hand, there's nothing holding you back. <laughs> so I went to the same tattoo guy, and I got it. And it's fun, because I'm like an optical illusion from far away. It's like, what's his deal? He's tough. Then you get up close and you see I have okay on my knuckles. <laughs> and you're like, I didn't know kids could get tattoos. That's insane. <laughs> he must be part of the chillest biker gang ever. <laughs> so, okay. Whatever you want. But I like tattoos. It's a cool personal reflection of who I am. But some people judge people for tattoos. And they're like, oh, that's, they're a criminal or something. What you should really think when you see someone with tattoos is, that dude has so much extra income to spend on tattoos. <laughs> I bet he's got a financial advisor. I should talk to that person. <laughs> He's, he paid someone 120 bucks an hour to tattoo a cat on his leg. He must have insights into stocks. <laughs> I don't know, tattoos are fun. And so I try to understand to help my dating life because I realize I like suburb girls. That's my problem. I live in big cities, but I like suburb girls because I understand suburb girls. I don't really understand big city girls. Like suburb girl, you go see her and she like, Bone, I just want to tell you, I got a tattoo. I'm like, cool. She got a little butterfly on her collarbone. I'm like, girl, that's so cute. <laughs> big city girl like, Bone, I got a tattoo. She got a cobra snake coming up the back of her leg <laughs> with a buffalo head on the front of it. <laughs> That was good, man. I, uh, tattoos, clap your hands, tattoos in the house. Tattoos, all right, maybe one person, that's it. That's how y'all get down to Utah. I was like, man. It's like, we got the one person that got a tattoo over here. That's what it is. Don't worry, I don't have one. I don't have one either, so I'm kind of with y'all. But I always wanted to get one, but I always was afraid I was gonna get one that's gonna be messed up and then I gotta live with it for the rest of my life. Got a friend of mine, she was all excited one day. I said, what you all happy about? She said, I'm about to go to this tattoo party. And I said, what is a tattoo party? She said, I got a friend of mine that want to be a tattoo artist. Throw these parties on the weekends and give everybody free tattoos so we can practice. <laughs> and I said, you mean like with a Sharpie? 
She said, no, nah, with a real tattoo gun. I said, what they look like? She said, they getting better. I said, are you crazy? She's like, no, it's free. I said, that's not what I asked you. I asked you if you was crazy. She's like, it's free. I was like, whatever. I said, what you gonna get? She said, I'm gonna let him decide. I said, you crazy. That's easy, right? A couple of days later, she come to the house smiling. I said, what'd you get? She said, my Zodiac sign. I said, let me see. She took her shirt sleeve down on her arm. Her tattoo said Leo. Had a Leo symbol. Had a lion underneath it, but the lion had a massive, massive underbite. Her lion had an uncorrectable underbite, okay? Like every time she moved her arm, like the lion was singing, and you woo, woo, woo. I said, even if the top part of your arm got fat right here, his jaw is still gonna be messed up. She said, I think it look cute. I said, I think you need to cut your arm off. I'm just being honest. Couple days later, a couple days later, my boy came over the house, had the same arm bandaged up. And I said, what happened to your arm? He said, I went to this free tattoo party. I said, what'd you get? He said, my Zodiac sign. I said, you lying. I said, what'd you, I said, what'd you get? He said, my Zodiac sign. I said, man, please let me see this tattoo. I said, you're not a Leo, are you? He's like, nah. I said, let me see. Took his shirt off, took the bandage off. On his tattoo, it said Aquarius. Had the Aquarius symbol. Had the same lion. <laughs> with a swim cap on. I said, damn. Ah. Not Aquarius, that's what that is. But uh, I got a girlfriend, sorry everybody. I don't wanna dangle this meat in front of you. Girlfriend is a Canadian, which I didn't know she's Canadian. She's got a tattoo of a maple leaf on her leg. I just thought she was a big fan of Autumn or something, but, but that's what they do. When you're born in Canada, they will brand you with the maple leaf just so you can get back in without waiting in line. It's like a Disney pass. And uh, the other thing I was gonna talk about, so I got glasses, and I was thinking about getting a tattoo. Now, I'm trying to think, how many people have good tattoos? Round of applause. <laughs> That's kind of what's hurting my decision. Even people that like their tattoos, you find that they lose steam halfway through explaining it, you know? Like, oh, mine, I still like it. It's a gnome that's playing football, and yeah, I probably shouldn't have got this one. I probably, probably should have sobered up, then I could wear short sleeves in the summer without my kids laughing at me. Just don't want to make that mistake, man. And I've lived through a couple generations. I've seen them, you know? Like, uh, I remember when I was in college, everyone got a barbed wire tattoo. Why wouldn't you want fake barbed wire drilled into your arm. That's a good decision. <laughs> if you work at Bank of America, right? <laughs> and then uh, everyone got the Chinese symbol. Nothing is the Chinese language, but the hardest language to learn. No one ever took it in school. You just gotta trust that Vinny at the tattoo shop has perfect Chinese script. <laughs> and if you go to a Chinese guy, you just gotta trust that he's not goofing on you and put cashew chicken on your neck instead of... <laughs> instead of loyalty or whatever you want. <laughs> I don't know, I guess here's the thing, here's the analogy. Like, remember the Fitbit, everybody had the Fitbit. We all had it for exactly a month. And then we all decided, oh, this is stupid, why we have this? That's what I'm worried my tattoos are gonna be. <laughs> like, if I get three bad tattoos, it's like wearing a Fitbit, a Snuggie, and Crocs for the rest of my life. <laughs> I don't think I can go through with it. Like, I'm not cool. I don't have any tattoos. Everyone's all tatted up now. The tattoos are a bit much, though, aren't they? You know, everyone's like, I got a panther on this shoulder. I got an avocado on this shoulder. <laughs> got my favorite word written on my back. My whole generation just treating our bodies like we treated our binders in grade seven. <laughs> yeah. and my look is less ideal than ever. <laughs> it's real. I, here's the deal, uh, I am a Jewish man, but I look like an accountant for the Aryan Brotherhood. <laughs> and I know that. It's not good, I didn't do it on purpose, but I do. I look like the nerdiest guy in the worst prison gang. It's a problem. <laughs> it's a serious problem. They're just like, he doesn't kill people. He does read a lot though, he does. <laughs> 
Oh, man. It's, it's fine, though. People are wild. Uh, they surprise me all the time with how wild they are. Recently, I was in a shoe store, and I was just looking at shoes, and a dude comes up to me, and he goes, oh, your face, that's crazy. I can't believe you did that. <laughs> and then he goes, dude, so what are you, like a tattoo artist? And I was like, no, nah, man, I'm not good at art. And he goes, so just no job? <laughs> Like there's no other options? <laughs> so, so I, like, I can do work. He's like, oh, so what do you do? And I was like, well, technically no job. <laughs> but still, come on, man. And then he goes, well, if you need any help with anything, you let me know. I was like, you work here? <laughs> so disrespectful. <laughs> People are crazy disrespectful. I live in New York. Dudes, this is a thing that is happening often. Dudes who want to get my attention in public, they will combine what they think I look like with prison and yell it at me. The other day, a guy was like, hey, you. And I was like, mm. and he goes, yeah, you. Harry Potter, but make a prison. Come over here. It's like, what? I'll come over, but I didn't like that. Yeah. This is true. The other day I was sitting on the subway. I'm sitting minding my business. This guy's scooting past me. He looks up at me and he stops and he goes, Hey, Jim from the office did 10 years in prison. Look at you. <laughs> I did not like that one. I was like, that one was accurate. <laughs> like, come on, man. I'm trying to grow my hair out. Let me live my life. People on the train were laughing. He was killing. And he goes, oh, so Pam left and you just snapped, huh? <laughs> he has follow-ups? <laughs> Come on! <laughs> yeah, just going hard. Uh, <laughs> I've been doing this, which I shouldn't do. I've been reading comments on my videos online. What a nightmare online is, just in general. Uh, this is real, I've been noticing this in comments. This is a new thing, a new trend I've been noticing. People, uh, usually older people, will be annoyed with my tattoos. Now this is completely new. They will see me and then be like, ugh, I remember when having your face or your throat tattooed meant that you were a criminal. It meant that you were dangerous. Now it just means you're a hipster. And I'm just like, are you disappointed I'm not a murderer right now? What is happening? It's like you, you assume, you, firstly, you're making assumptions about who I am based on how I look, and then when I don't live up to them, you're like, it makes no sense. I'm furious. I cannot win with these people. And then what's even crazier is that I happen to have gang tattoos on my face. I used to be a criminal when I was younger. Not always the case, but in my case it is. Sometimes I will tell people that to stop them from being annoyed with my tattoos. And then with so much confidence, they'll just tell me, no. No, you weren't a criminal. Listen, I've seen The Wire and Sons of Anarchy, and you were not. They're like experts now. It's incredible. I spent the entire first part of my life only wanting respect from the scariest people you can imagine, and now I'm on Facebook arguing with a 40-year-old woman named Joy. <laughs> And she, she's just like, I bet you've never even stabbed anybody. Like, what? Like, I've stabbed two people in my life. She's just like, not even three. I bet they both survived. Oh my gosh. These are... The these are the same people who do stuff. They'll be like, aren't you worried about how you're gonna look when you're older? Look at all that. Aren't you worried about how you're gonna look when you're older? It's just like, okay, well, you're wearing dress socks with jean shorts. Why don't you worry about how you look right now? How about that? <laughs> yeah. I mentioned that I'm married. Uh, it's fun, I like it. We've been married four years. So far, so good, I like her. 
was great. Um, wasn't always married. Before I was married, I dated, and I wasn't very good at that. Because uh, I have this bad habit where if someone's a little rude to me, I have to be a lot rude. Back. And that's not a good trait for dating. Like, I punish with extreme prejudice. I was on a date with a girl, it wasn't going great. You know, neither of us is having fun, but I'm trying, you know? She's just buried in her phone the whole time. I'm trying to make conversation. She has a tattoo on her arm of Abraham Lincoln. You know, like the beard, the face, the hat, that thing. So trying to make conversation, I say, I love your tattoo. I'm a big fan of Abraham Lincoln. And then she looked up from her phone like it was this huge chore. And said, that's not Abraham Lincoln. My grandpa was an Abraham Lincoln impersonator. And when he died, I got this tattoo to remember him by. And then went back to her phone like that should have been obvious to me the entire time. So I said, I'm sorry to hear about your grandpa. Uh, was he shot in a theater? <laughs> she said, no. I said, well, that's not a very good impersonation then. <laughs> On my way out here, uh, I was in the airport. There was this guy with a tattoo on his neck. And it said, ready to die. Not exactly the message I was looking for from the pilot. Maybe like, ready to fly, ready to stick that landing. I'll even take ready to try. But ready to die? I don't have any tattoos. I'm. I'm let this out here, let the cat out of the bag. I'm Jewish, everybody. Jews were not supposed to have tattoos. It's sacrilegious. Truth, it's because they hurt. <laughs> Ouch. I grew up with guys like, you know, guy guys that can fix stuff. You know, ride motorcycles, can fight. Do things like, you know, I can't. <laughs> To this day, we get together. We'll get together, they're always like, hey, let's get tattoos. Let's remember tonight, forever. I'm like, hey, let's get stickers. <laughs> let's forget this ever happened. We got a lot to talk about. My body's wearing off. I woke up to this today, yay. <laughs> the change is happening. Where's the camera? Balcony, you like this? And I'm kind of ripped. What is this? Can't get an arm tattoo now. The heck am I gonna get, a hammock? I wish I, I wish I could be a manly guy. I really do. I wish I could get a tattoo or something. I just, I couldn't do it. I'm scared of needles. It'd be like, Daniel, what happened to that tiger you were gonna get? I'd be like, uh, yeah, the needle hurt. Now I just have a comma. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking about finishing it into a semicolon. <laughs> then I'll get the winky face. <laughs> Look at it wink. I got a buddy, he's got them everywhere, right? Tattoos all the way up to his neck, two full sleeves, the works. He's always complaining to me, though, about not being able to get a job. He's just like, I don't get it, man. I'm like, dude, what's not to get? You got a tattoo of a demon on your neck. You should have been smarter about this and gotten a tattoo of your resume. It's like, hey, check it out. Shift leader Burger King, 04 to 08. 
I dropped a couple french fries. <laughs> but we had uh, a lot of barbed wire tattoos on the arm. In Mon Montana, a lot of bar barbed wire tattoo. It comes in handy if you have trouble with cattle crossing from your shoulder to your elbow. <laughs> that barbed wire tattoo keeps everybody's property straight, right? <laughs> Cows see that, they're like, I'm not going near that, you know? <laughs> Took my ribs on it last time, so. I got a tattoo of some wire cutters on this arm. I'm like, I'm gonna get you, you know? I'm gonna get you, I'm gonna get your lifestyle. Oh, I can't wait till my kids get out, get some experience and a little money management. My son, we're going around the table last year for Thanksgiving, asking everybody what they're happy for, blessed, grateful, proud. His hand's the first one up. Pretty stoked I saved up 160 bucks. I'm like, sweet, man, what are you gonna buy, a tire? <laughs> Start a hedge fund? How do you leverage that kind of coin? <laughs> he goes, I'm gonna get a tattoo. <laughs> All right, man. what are you gonna get? I'm gonna get a bravery band. What in the heck is that? It's one of those tribal chicken wire deals around the arm, which is gonna look awesome on the 14 inch biceps of my redheaded son. <laughs> Sweet, what tribe are you in, Ed Sheeran? What do you got going on? <laughs> I go, bravery, Bran, what, what is that? He goes, it denotes bravery. I gathered that from the title. But you haven't done anything in your life to denote bravery. Bravery would start with moving out of the house. Why don't you get like a tattoo of a nightlight? <laughs> the Chinese symbol for empty the dishwasher. <laughs> you get like clean on one side and dirty on the other, like load, unload, load, unload. <laughs> he was all mad I was breaking his chops. Like, man, you never support any of my decisions. <laughs> you start making some good ones, I'll get on that train. Teaching history also allows me to teach about race issues, which I think is very important in our country right now. I also recognize not really the right guy to do it, right? Like, <laughs> super bald, super white dude? Mm -mm. I'm one neck tattoo away from a hate crime right now. I don't think. <laughs> me and this guy teaching your history class? No way. I like Los Angeles, but where I live, it's actually kind of a dangerous neighborhood. Actually, there's a Hispanic gang in the area, or as they like to call themselves, uh, cholos, uh, which sounds like a delicious snack treat. Uh, I'm sure it's like a deep fried pastry, you put sugar on it. Uh, that's a churro, turn that to churro. Uh, do not put sugar on a cholo. It'll confuse them for a minute, and you can make a run for it. Um, if they're diabetic, they'll have a seizure. <laughs> um, but I'm at the grocery store the other day. I see one of these uh, cholo fellas, and he's got one of these teardrop tattoos. You ever seen those? Which are just adorable. <laughs> but my buddy says that means he killed somebody in the joint. Yeah. But you know what I think it means? I think it means someone needs a hug. Yeah. <laughs> Turns out I was wrong, did not want a hug. Um, <laughs> now, you know if they have the filled in teardrop tattoo, it means they actually did kill somebody. And if five of them are filled in, they can get a free car wash. Uh, <laughs> it's quite a deal there. Uh, any gangs here tonight? Do we have any gangs here? Uh, or as you guys call them, uh, wards? Uh, <laughs> A lot of drive-by conversions. <laughs> ching, 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 join us, ching, ching. Um, get in the basket. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna get beat up by Mormons tonight. Uh, it's gonna be the special feature on this special. Um, <laughs> beaten by Mormons. The Tom Clark story. Um, now be careful of the gangs though, folks, especially here in Provo. Uh, no, I don't know if you know this, if you're driving at night, you see someone with their headlights off, do not flash them with your headlights. It's some sort of gang initiation, right? They'll go after you. So now if I'm driving at night, I see someone with their headlights off, you know, I, I shoot them. Uh, 
why risk it, right? Safety first. That old lady could win packet for all I know. Uh, I like being a dad, right? But it's weird, right? It's right after you was born, I realized that I took a notch down in who my wife loved in the family, you know? I mean, she loves me, but she has a different love for this thing. This thing. <laughs> my son. <laughs> yeah, after he was born, she was like, I want to get a tattoo of Owen's name on my foot or my ankle or something, which I think is cool, but I've known my wife a long time. She has no tattoos. So I'm giving her crap, like, that's cool, baby, get a tattoo, but you know what? I don't see any Tom tattoos on you anywhere. She's like, yeah, I know, but this is our son. This is permanent. <laughs> yes, ha, 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 ha. She is hilarious. I feel some of you are like, okay, what's going on with this guy, you know? <laughs> are we at a show or are we being robbed, you know? <laughs> you are at a show, but you might also be getting robbed. Time will tell, okay? I, uh, let's talk about me for a moment. We'll start with some basics. Uh, I live across the street from a 7-Eleven, all right? It's not funny yet, but okay, cool. <laughs> I, uh, I drink a lot of Mountain Dew, okay? It's like my only vice. I drink a lot of Mountain Dew. I'm in that 7-Eleven constantly drinking Mountain Dew, okay? Getting refills. I'm in there so often that everyone who works in that 7-Eleven, they have a nickname for me. When they see me, they call me Mountain Dew Guy. Yeah. Do you guys know how much Mountain Dew I have to drink not to have the nickname Throat Tattoo Guy? It is a lot. The <laughs> it's so much Mountain Dew, you guys. It's a lot. It's a For me to walk into 7-Eleven and the guy to be like, Mountain Dew Guy, and the new guy who works there to be like, not Throat or Face Tattoo Guy? He drinks more Mountain Dew than the fact that he ruined his life by tattooing his face. And the guy's like, yeah, what aren't you getting about this, you know? Yeah, uh, I also know it was a bad idea to tattoo my face, just so we're all on the same page, okay? Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I, when I tattooed my face, well, I didn't. When I got my face tattooed, when I got my face tattooed, I was like, there will be positives and there will be negatives, you know? I wanna be honest with you guys. It has been mostly negative so far, okay? <laughs> I can't even think of one positive. I'm gonna be real with you guys. Uh, so I'm here to make you laugh tonight, but I'm also here to say, if some of you are thinking about tattooing your face, probably don't, okay? <laughs> I saw... I saw some of you come in and I don't think you could handle it. All right, it's not, <laughs> could not hack it. It's, it's rough out here. Uh, all my tattoos are real. I shouldn't have to say that. But sometimes after shows, I meet people and they're like, wow, crazy, man, you look crazy. Are those all real? And I have to be like, what, what are you talking about right now? Of course they're real. What do you think I drew all these on today? <laughs> I just wake up every day and draw these on? Like, what would I stand to gain from drawing fake tattoos on my throat and face? I just wake up every morning and I'm drawing them on like, you know what? I just want old people to be afraid of me. That's what I'm about, you know? I just wake up every day and draw tattoos on my fingers like, I just want to struggle in job interviews, you know? <laughs> One, one time after a show, a lady comes up to me and she's like, don't be so hard on yourself. And I'm like, thank you so much. Will you give me a job? And she was like, it's nice meeting you. <laughs> Come back. I need work. I, uh, uh, I travel a lot for this job. This is my only job, which is, is probably not good. But you know what? I'm, I travel a lot, and people in other places, they're like pretty cool. Not very many people care about my tattoos. Uh, I live here in Utah. I gotta say, uh, some of you are not on board, okay? <laughs> I have a lot of weird experiences here that don't happen anywhere else. I'll give you an example. Once I got done with a show, uh, I'm here in Utah, I get done with a show, and an older gentleman comes up to me afterwards. So old, so, so old, you guys. Have you ever, have you ever seen someone so old that if they were getting in the driver's side of a car, you'd be like, uh, is anybody else seeing this right now? You know? Do I have to stop? Am I the one? You know? How, how close are we to a farmer's market? Like, 
what is the danger level here? Is what, and he's so old, and he comes right up to me, and he, he goes, hey man, I love your comedy. Good job, staying off the streets. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. Okay. <laughs> Off the what? Where did you learn how to talk like that? What are you, the coolest guy at your retirement home? You know? He's just like, I'm the Tupac of my friend group. Like, what? <laughs> just assumes I'm gangster because I have lots of tattoos. I am not gangster. That's not how it works at all. Okay? I'm the least gangster person ever. I cry at the end of Toy Story 3 like everybody else. Okay? <laughs> That guy cried so hard, all right? Do you know, me and him, a lot of crying, okay? And yeah, man, it's not gangster. It just makes no sense. I got done, here's another thing. I'm at a grocery store. I get in line behind this lady, just a regular lady, nothing going on. She doesn't notice me getting in line behind her. She's standing there. She turns around, she sees me, and she makes this noise. She goes, oh, 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 and then she left. <laughs> she just left. With all her stuff? Like, yeah, uh, pretty sure she's stealing right now. Is anybody? Is, is anybody else watching her, you know? They were not. Uh, yeah, so pretty sure she got away with like a lot of free stuff. Uh, oh, man. <laughs> I don't know. You guys would be surprised to know, though, despite all the weird interactions I have with people who, like, are weird about my tattoos or don't know what it's like to have tattoos, the weirdest interactions, my least favorite interactions, are always with other people who are heavily tattooed. Not a fan of other heavily tattooed people, okay? Yeah. I'm calling it. It's not good. I know everything I need to know about another guy with a lot of tattoos, you know? Your parents hit you. School was hard. You like to bring a snake to the park, you know? <laughs> I get it, you know? I don't want to have these weird conversations with guys. It's terrible. I'll give you an example, okay? I'm at Walmart. I'm standing in line. Everything's going fine. I'm in line a lot in my jokes, so just keep going with that. But I'm in, <laughs> I'm in line. I'm standing there. I look over, and I see this guy wearing a tank top, and he's bald head completely covered in black and gray tattoos. His entire head is like covered in flames. He's got skulls and stuff. Obviously he got all these tattoos in prison, okay? I feel some of you being awkward. He's not here, we're safe, all right? Also, I'm allowed to make the judgment call, all right? So I see him, he sees me, and we make eye contact and it's locked in for a second. And immediately I'm like, oh no. This guy's gonna try to talk to me, you know? <laughs> have you ever just seen someone in public who's gonna talk to you, and they're just so white trash you don't have the energy to deal with them? <sighs> so many crazy people. So this guy, he comes up to me, all right. This dude at Walmart, covered in his tattoos, he comes up to me. His opening line to me, the first thing he says, he goes, hey man, where'd you do your time? Like, what? <laughs> I've done zero time, everyone. I've never been to jail a day in my life, okay? This guy's, but he's like, he's just making an assumption about me. He's trying to connect with me. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna connect with him. I'll meet him halfway. I'll just mess with him a little. So I was like, you know how it is, man. Did five years in Azkaban, no big deal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. He, he wanted to impress me so bad. He was like, word, all right, cool, cool. <laughs> Like, all that time in prison and you didn't read one Harry Potter book. <laughs> seems seems kind of like a waste, you know? I don't know what he's up to now, but I'm pretty sure it's not reading, so... It's not, not good. This is the thing that happened to me recently. I'm walking around. I see all these people gather around a tree. They're all, like, around this tree. I'm like, what is this? And I walk up. And they're like, they're all standing there and I see one guy and he goes, hey man, there's a cat stuck up on the top of this tree. Look at you with all your tattoos. You're not afraid of anything. Why don't you climb up and get it down? Uh, that's not how tattoos work, guy, okay? Yeah, yeah. You don't tattoo the fear out of people. That's not a thing that's never been a thing. No one's like getting a tattoo and the tattoo artist is like, how does it feel? And the guy's like, oh, it hurts real bad, but I don't care about sharks anymore, you know? <laughs> Silly.
that's probably still up there. I don't know, you know? 